everyone, today is February 29th, 2020, and happy Leap Day. This is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. This week, Konami dropped a bomb on us, releasing all the news, the long-awaited nerfs, limits, whatever you like to call them, are finally here, so we're going to check out all those things. New PvE events this week. Um... Acquisition event for Blair Flanagan. We have new cards from her for that event. Uh, in addition to getting the character, some new level of cards and dual skills. Scheming Weevil is also here. Second appearance of him. Two new cards from that event. We're talking about the DSOD level up increase. All mo- all movie characters have gone up to level 35, which means some gems and some more cards. Uh, card flipper campaign one. Third copy there, Doug Dimmit Duel is going to come with a competitive deck of the week, taking into account the nerfs and a Dark Magician deck. Expensive pay-to-win Dark Magician deck, he may, he might have to add. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, so there's a disclaimer before you get too deep into this episode. What it is, is there was way too much content released Thursday and Friday, I think. That was when everything was dropped. And I did not get to everything. That's just what it is. Or if I did get to everything, it would be a two-hour episode. And I don't think anyone wants to do that. So what this episode will not discuss at all is the new box. There will be no discussion of the new box in this episode. I'm going to try to do that next week. And in addition to that, this episode will not discuss Blair Flanagan's level up cards and her unique dual skills. I have that all on the bottom of this list, but didn't make the cut. I will talk about her event cards just for this event while it's going on. Um, If you want to check out that stuff, I think some other podcasts have that. Chainlink Podcast, for example. I know um, Pro Benchwarmer is going to talk about that, so check out his podcast. But uh, it's on hold for now. In terms of my week of the Duel World, I I really don't have anything to say. Um, I've played enough every day just to get the sandwiches. And yeah, I'm, I'm in Legend 4. I, I tend to take a King of Games, Legend, King of Games, Legend alternating schedule. So this is just my, this is just my month to have Legend, I guess. But um, in addition, I just don't have time nowadays. I just play... For the PVE, and then I have to go to sleep, and you know, it's tough living life and getting my ass kicked by work, which is an ongoing thing. Hopefully, hopefully things get better better after Monday. But that's all I have to say about dual, uh, my week in the dual world. Let's get to esports. There's only going to be one tournament we're going to talk about in the interest of time. And this is kind of a, um, kind of a sad one, because this is Duel Links Meta Weekly 113, and whenever nerfs are announced... Or limits, they tried to implement those changes. So this could be the last, you know, meta here. This could be this last snapshot of this meta. So let's see. First place, Wayne Kenoff, Transcendent Crystals, Christrons. Um, 30 card deck, full deck. This deck won't be hit by the nerfs at all. I'm just looking at it right now. And, you know, it's a traditional Christron deck. They don't need grass or anything like that. Um, two Treacherous Trap Hole. Two Crystron Impacts, of course. Two Offerings to Doom. Three Forbidden Lands. And the rest of them are just Crystron Monsters. Second place, Mordecai. Cyber Style. Uh, Cyber Dragons. Again, this is an, another uh, archetype that's not hit by the nerfs. Um, I don't know what else to say about this deck. There's pretty much what you expect. Three Cosmic Cyclones, of course, for Life Point Loss. Cybernetic Fusion Support is... Another choice for the uh, life point loss for cyber style. Three floodgates, I guess that's a notable thing. Not much to say other than that. Up four, Luxon Sealed Tomb Shirinui. This is a 20 card version of the deck. Um, still going to get hit by the nerfs, but no grass. Um, this this is the way the deck is going to be moving forward without grass. Um, always nice to have Fiendish Chain in the deck. Gold Sarcophagus, of course. Gold Sarcophagus is this is a staple. Not much else to say about this deck. And top four, Hizuma, Sealed Tombs, um, Ritual Beasts. 
Um, yeah, this, so this, this, this version of the deck won't exist with the nerfs going. It does run Artifact Lancia. Herald of the Abyss is a popular choice. We're going to see more of that card. Treacherous Trap Hole probably won't exist in the future deck. It, it stands to see whether um, Ritual Beasts will be good enough with the one nerf they got. Um, of course, this deck is running Sealed Tombs. That's another thing to talk about. So that is it here. Even Element Savers, they they got a top 8, but they didn't place in the top 4 in the last tournament. We're still going to see these... Um, these nerf decks in other tournaments. I think Duel Links meta just likes to implement the skill changes and test them out first, which is pretty cool because you're kind of in this intermediate state before the the changes are actually live, and you're just testing it out. And it really does help create the best decks, prepare you for what's coming. That's Duel Links meta weekly 13. Let's get to... Oh, balancing. So, um, as Konami does in Duel Links, skill rebalancing and card limits come on different times. And for skill rebalancing, they're expecting it to come March 17th to 19th. And separate skills are being changed. I think the creator is being changed on March 24 with the Forbidden and Limitless. So, not all these skills are coming at the same time, and they don't even have a concrete date about when it is, but we still have, let's see, today's the 29th. We'll have over two weeks, like two and a half weeks before these skills are hit. So, uh, let's talk about it. Sealed Tombs. Sealed Tombs can only be activated now if your life points are lower than your opponents by over a thousand, a thousand or less. So, before there was no activation requirement you could just do it turn one you could do it whenever and it was always just used once so that didn't change but now there's that activation cost now one could say i could just use cosmic cyclone and i'm good right that's not always the case because your opponent can also use cosmic cyclone and lower their life points to match yours and that makes it much more situational um so you definitely have to make sure when to time that also, the turn one player typically can't use sealed tombs to lock out turn two player because there's nothing set on the board for them to use sealed tombs. Unless there's some you know monster ability that makes them lose a thousand like um Dark Lord Ixchel, for example. So there has to be some innate way of losing life points other than using Cosmic Cyclone, Mirror Wall, Herald of the Abyss, anything like that. So right now as it stands, uh Sealed Tombs is going to have the same activation cost as No Mortal Can Resist. And while No Mortal Can Resist does not um, you know, lock out your opponent for the next turn, it does have greater late game appeal in that it turns everything into skeletons and then they just can't do anything. It's kind of like the kill switch um, at the end when they're trying to come back and use stuff from the graveyard and they can't. But they do have... Uh, tools going in the mid game to uh, repopulate the graveyard if no mortal can resist is used early and of course the skill the timing of no mortal can resist has to be used at the right time if you use it too early it's no good then right and you have to make sure you know what's in your opponent's deck so you you turn those guys into skeletons and there's nothing they can do about that so i have a feeling no mortal can resist will replace sealed tombs but um sealed tombs isn't you know, completely dead, but it's just more situational now, and that does affect it quite a bit. It's a good thing, though, because Sealed Tombs was just used in every deck. Like, when it, when a skill becomes like that, Konami has no choice but to hit it with something. Next up on the nerf is Sorcery Conduit. Now it has a life point activation cost at 1,500 instead of 1,000, and this is... Primarily because of Invoked, uh, Invoked Element Saver, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was just too easy to match, you know, activating Cosmic Cyclone for your benefit. So you could draw Alistair in the next turn. Um, the skill's definitely not dead. Um, Herald of the Abyss, a card I liked for a while. 1500 life point loss, 
This is exactly what Herald of the Abyss does. So in some situations, you can you know, swing it to your benefit. And Herald of the Abyss, of course, the reason why it's so good is because it's a send card to the graveyard. There's no targets. You pick a type and an attribute. That's all you have to get right. So you have to make sure you know what that is. Sometimes cards are tricky. It's a... Uh, it's something that's between a warrior and a spellcaster, and you pick the wrong one, and you're screwed. So you have to make sure you read to use <laughs> Herald of the Abyss. Attribute, you can see what color it is, so that's pretty easy, but you have to make sure you get the type right. And there's no destroy. It's send to the graveyard. You Your opponent picks it. There's no targeting. That's the best part about Herald of the Abyss. Bad things about the Herald of the Abyss. It's situational. Your opponent has to have a face-up monster. And... It's easier to hit a setback row because that seems like it happens every turn. Sometimes your opponent just sets a monster in defense mode and that's it. And your Her- Herald of the Abyss can't work there either. So um, it's slow too, of course. It's a normal spell. But I really like the card. And I think it would be part of Element Saber invoked moving forward. Other options. Invoke decks can run more Lapoya. Lapoya, it's a trade-off. It's, it's a great you know, negation card, because if you have your field, you can populate the graveyard, you can just, you know, mill something from the deck. But the part, the, the thing that sucks is Lapoya only has 400 attack. You have to normal summon him, or you have to flip him over, which isn't ideal, because your opponent's already running those spells while he's set in defense mode. So typically, you do run it, you run him in attack mode, try to protect him, and then he can negate the spells. Other options, they can use other back row removal. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone is going to be out, so Night Beam, uh, Galaxy Cyclone, Shin Zheng Hu, there's a lot of options out there, and um, the power of Cosmic Cyclone with Sorcery Conjured really put those cards into the like box. They, they went away. So you know, this is a good change. This goes along with Cosmic Cyclone's change, and Overall, I'd say Cosmic Cyclone leaves Invoke decks for good because it doesn't even hit the Sorcery Conduit 1500. So I still expect this deck, this, this card, this skill to see play in Invoked, but with Herald of the Abyss instead. Next up is Compensation. Compensation can only be used once per turn and twice per duel instead of infinitely. And this is definitely great because Dark Lord games. They went on forever until Fatigue. They have these huge beaters, and then they still go into Fatigue. Um, yeah, it's it's a no-brainer here. The deck... The deck... No, you know, looking at decks every week, decks have to evolve to get better. Even Shirinui has evolved to get better. And Dark Lords don't evolve. They're the same deck. And that's because compensation is so good. So, you know, this had to be done. It, it's... Games just went on forever, and the amount of control they had over the game was just unrivaled. Now, if you are going to play Dark Lords, it seems they're not going to be a control deck anymore. They're going to have to move fast and probably use Beat Down or Tie That Bind, something that buffs big monsters to end the game. And with compensation being like this, it's not going to be used anymore. Next up are three skills, Spell Specialist, Trap Layer, and My Monster Cards. They will have their probabilities reduced on how often you have those cards, the chances of having those cards in your starting hand. And this is all up to... There's no transparency here, first of all. Um, Konami was never transparent. Oh, you have 50% higher chance of getting a monster with My Monster Cards. It wasn't really ever there. So this is something that the community has to test out. A real um, a real enigma here. Uh, they don't know... My Monster Cards was actually a useful skill. Spell Specialist, of course, with Grass. But Spell Specialist can see uses outside of it. Outside of um, Grass decks. So Trap Layer I've seen before, of course, in those um, Trap Monster decks. But... My Monster Cards is the more important one here, and the community will have to test it when it comes out. If it consistently fails you, there's no point in running this skill because it's literally a skillless deck then at that point. So, um, 
yeah, these are... We don't know what's going to happen with these three skills. Chances are... Chances are they add one more card of randomness, and that may be enough to make it not worth using. I think there's gonna be have there's gonna be some math involved here. Again, the next skill, creator. Creator was a skill that they don't even tell you what cards you get. You have to play it to know what cards you're gonna get. And all they say is that it's gonna have an update to match the current meta game. And yeah, we don't know what cards we're going to get. And this one is coming later at March 24th. It's It should be noted that this skill never really saw any play at all. They gave you Mirror Force. They gave you Pot of Greed. It still didn't matter. No one knew what it was. Uh, no one played it ever. There's a bit of RNG in it. Um, it might not fit your deck. You know, Typically, the cards should be good. You know, They should be... Monster Reborn or something, you know, something that helps any deck, but it never saw any play. Um, there's there's definitely a balance they have to make. They have to make the skill playable, but then not make it completely busted, and that's tough for a skill with a lot of RNG. Um, and you definitely don't want to lose a game to RNG. They could have, like, 25% the best card ever, and if you're lucky enough to get that 25%, you'll just straight out beat your opponent with your inferior creator deck right so there's a huge balance of what cards to include but again we have a lot of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh for them to pick to fill this creator spot so I'm excited to see what comes of it the next few skills are changed the same way so cyber dark style is a little different cyber dark style previously was an RNG skill you draw a random uh, cyber dark monster from outside your deck and it was also a draw sense skill in that you gave up your normal draw for a cyber dark. Now the change is change is what? Instead of costing your normal draw, you can return the card from a card from your hand and then draw the card. And then you also draw a monster from the deck instead of drawing a random cyber dark monster from outside your deck. So there's two changes to Cyber Dark Style. First, the draw sense change is gone, and it's now return card draw. And then also the randomness is gone. You get a card from your deck. You draw, you draw a Cyber Dark Monster from your deck. So this is good in two ways. But the problem is Cyber Darks are still pretty weak to flip face down, things like Paleo's or Canadia. So in the end, I don't think this will make Cyber Dark played um, much. You're going to have to run Cosmic Cyclones, you know, night beams, things like that to clear the way if they are going to make it because if they're flipped face down, they can't equip the monsters to themselves and trigger those effects. Next one is Bring It. Um, same, it's only the one change with Bring It, and that is the instead of the draw sense cost, you return a card to return uh, to draw the card. And what this does is this specifically helps Destiny Hero Plasma get more splash play. Destiny Hero Plasma is a card that is very strong if you can get three things onto the board. And it does a lot of... It equips itself to the monster. To the, You probably pick your strongest, the opponent's strongest monster. It equips it, gains half of its attack, and then it negates all monster effects on the field. So that is why you do play it. And I think this uh, change could allow... This to be a generally useful skill against um, four decks that can flood the board pretty well. So uh, I think this is a skill to watch because Destiny Hero Plasma can can be a game changer, I must say. Next one is Might of the King. This is a Jack Atlas skill. And um, it was a thing where you had Red Dragon Arch Fiend. You could draw three cards randomly from outside your deck uh scarlet security red dragon vase or crimson fire the skill the cards you draw still have not changed but again it's the removal of the draw sense cost on your normal draw and returning it to the hand i, I don't think the skill will be played still because red dragon arch Fiend has not been a build around archetype it's more of a level eight synchro option and it's not it's there's there is red dragon support. There's the um, 
salt mode version, and then there's another upgraded version of Red Dragon Archfiend. But no one plays those versions. It's just a level 8 synchro play. And you're not going to revolve your whole deck around the level 8 synchro play when there's other options around too, right? So it doesn't make much sense. And finally, Chain Reaction and Love is Pain are just getting text changes. Uh, let's see. How much... It's about, like, receiving damage. They're all both burn skills, of course, but it's just making it clear when the burn happens. I think Chain Reaction is a card. The timing the timing of traps matters when they lose the life points, and that's just what they're trying to clear up um, with those text changes. Next up is the Limit List. So there's been big changes to the upcoming Forbidden Limit List, and that includes... A whole new category called Limited 3. Don't forget the Limited 1, formerly known as Limited. A new inclusion to the Limit 1 list is That Grass Looks Greener. This is, you know, anyone who has played the game could tell you that this was going to happen. This was definitely going to happen. Grass Shirinui kind of got out of control. <laughs> and the amount of things that were just dumped into the graveyard... That was pretty much an auto win. And with the way the deck used the graveyard, it was just complete dominance. Even cards like Burgeoning World Flame, Nine Tailed Fox, Razuki even came back. There were all these graveyard interactions that just happened and made the deck really, really good. So, you know, Grass Looks Greener was definitely going to get a hit. It was a free card we got from the trader. Um,. Sucks to be someone who uh, made all those glo- uh, prismatic ones, but it is what it is. And um, Shirinui can live on. It, it depends on those other nerfs that happen, but they can live on a, as a 20-card deck without the grass. We've seen um, such decks be meta. People were expecting it um come back. So, I mean, they were expecting grass to get nerfed, so... Everyone has a lot of practice. They they can. The, the thing that makes Shirinui so good is it, it has a really lean core. They can just get by with just 11 cards. Some Squires, some Solitaires, some Spirit Masters, um, Old Sarcophagus, and they're pretty much set. But um, this is a bigger blow to other decks that use grass like Magnets, Magician Girls, the Quintet Magician decks, things like that. Um, Lesser decks that did rely on grass. I think... So, Shirinui could possibly use that dice dice it card from the jo- the recent Joey event. DSOD, DSOD Joey gives it, I think. Maybe, I'm not really sure, but there was a uh, a trap card with the um, Snipe Hunter on it. Where you, you roll the dice and you could... Uh, there's some graveyard banish interaction or deck milling interaction it's like depending on the dice roll how many cards you mill from your deck or how many cards you put into the graveyard there's there's something with it but that could be a card that could replace grass looks greener that's what i thought when i first saw that dice at card could be a successor so it's possible 30 cards sheer and weight isn't dead yet and they run dice it instead look at limit two limit two the semi limit list whatever you want to call it is typically the hardest the harshest penalty because a lot of really good cards are put in limit two. Your treacherous trap hole, your econs, your hatrunates, hey, they're all limit two. Concentrated currents there now, so a lot of cards being put here could mean the end of them. And Dark Lord Ixshell is such a card. It's a card that you ran three copies in every single Dark Lord deck you saw. This card was just the most important monster. Nastin was very important, but Ixshell was probably the most important monster. And she made you lose a 1,000 life points, which helped you do your compensation play. So there's two things there. And with compensation getting nerfed, I guess it makes it makes Ixshell less important. So it's not, it's not like it's a double blow, but it's more... It's affecting the same control strategy that Ixshell did with compensation, so it's not as bad, if that makes any sense. Losing... Compensation makes Ixshell less important. But still, this 
also really, really hurts because Dark Lord Contact is also semi-limited. So you can only play the Dark Lord Contact, zero Ixshell, two Ixshell, zero Dark Lord Contact, which sounds horrendous, or one of each. Um, I really have not played... I don't think I've ever played Dark Lord, so I can't say what is going to happen here, but this is really bad for them. And this grindy version of Dark Lords is pretty much gone for good with Ixshell being put into semi-limit and compensation getting nerfed. Sheer Noise Spectral Sword is also being added to limited too. And the grass is gone, and now this. And Sheer Noise Spectral Sword was the level 2 tuner, not the level... The level 3 tuner is called uh, Sheer Noise Spectral Sword Shade. And if you, if you do the math... That one is better for Shiranoi Squire Saga. And the level 2 tuner is better for the even ones. The Sun Saga, I don't forget what they're called. There's they're level 8 and level 10 plays are really, really strong. This semi-limit on Spectral Sword is trying to discourage the level 8 and 10 synchros and make you play more level 7 synchro, which can be comboed. The, levels, the level 7 synchro is easily countered by Paleozoic Canadia. And they have zero defense, so... Definitely is weaker. I think the level 10 Synchro protects all the monsters just by banishing stuff in the graveyard, so you just keep that on the board and you're good. So, what it is, is this is trying to discourage it. It's putting those cards on the semi-limit list, so Treacherous Trap Hole is probably gone from Shiranui, any of those semi-limited cards. Um, and Sealed Tombs is nerfed too, so, um, so what this could do is, I don't think this card could be gone completely, and what they can do is they could run the level 3 tuners, uh, Sheer Noise Spectral Sword Shade, and modify levels. With Sealed Tombs being nerfed, they can modify the level of the shade to make it even somehow. Um, I think they need to have, like, level augmentation, level 3, and then have a solitaire on the board and they make a level 8 or level 10 yeah you could use a 3 and a 3 to level aug to 6 and then you have a level 4 on the board that's level 10 so i think shiranui are going to have to move towards level modulation which is always it's not the best thing in the world but if you build your deck the right way and you know how to do math it should be fine but this uh hits at the current version of the deck Next up is the hit for Black Wings. Black Wing Oroshi the Squall, the level 1 tuner. And the level 1 tuner combos with level 6 Samoon the Poison Wind to get into your level 7 plays, which are typically the strongest plays for Black Wings. Additionally, Rikiri the Rain Shower, which is the once per turn destroy X cards based on the other Black Wings you have, is also semi limited. So there's a split here. In addition to all the other cards they split, I think Black Wings typically ran one Rikiri and one Treacherous Trap Hole, one Hey Trunade, something like that. Now there's a third competitor in Oroshi the Squall. I think Oroshi the Squall... I've played against this card, and its ability to change battle position in the graveyard is very effective against um, the uh, Synchro Toolbox deck. Um... Running Archfiend's Call has low defense, you get flipped over, and you lose the game. It's not even a target ability either, so if it hits the Archfiend's Call pretty well. But I think um, you have to have Rikiri in the deck for Black Wings. And I think Treacherous Trap Hole or Hey Trunit is better than this uh, level 1 tuner. So um, Erosius Goal will probably be replaced by Panaki or Jin the Rain Shadow. Jin the Rain Shadow is not that good. Panaki is a little better than Jin the Rain Shadow, but not not remarkable either. But they're both level 1 tuners who can just sub in for Roshi the Squall. Finally, um, no not finally, this is the last limit too. Ritual Beast Tamer Elder. I can't tell you anything about Ritual Beasts, but they do a million things per turn. And they were, they were a deck that just did really well. Good budget deck. They came out of a mini box... You get those, you know how to play the deck, you're good. They'd probably have to get Winda three times, but cost is a cost. And they had 99 cent deals for a bit, but this uh, primarily putting an Elder on the list hits at 
any of those other semi limit cards. Treacherous Trap Hole, Hey Trunade, things like that. And um now they they can't run those cards. So uh any ritual beast player um who heavily relied on those semi limited cards will need to find other cards to help them. Uh because Elder is such an important card, I don't think you can cut copies of Elder. Finally, there is a new category called Limited 3, and this is something they just made up. I don't think it's in the TCG at all, but they just made it up for Duel Links, and this specifically is for Element Saber Invoked as of now, because there are two cards on Limited 3. The first one is Palace of the Elemental Lords. This is the field spell of the Element Sabers, and... If you're talking about opening hand consistency, this is a card you want. It helps you draw cards. If you don't have a monster, it helps you use the abilities of the element savers when you have none in the hand. There's a lot this card can do. And it buffs all the monsters too. That's a very important part. So this is put on the same category as Cosmic Cyclone. Cosmic Cyclone, I think Duel Links has completely revolved around this card since Invoked came out. Just the match made in heaven. Um, Cosmic Cyclone being activated was a benefit to Sorcery Conduit to draw Alistair. And it was run in every deck, really. Um, any deck that just didn't have regular back row control, 1,000 life point activations, a benefit for some decks. And right now, this limited three category, is, it's hard to say how many cards will get added to this but it seems like it's just for cosmic cyclone right now so any any card or skill any skill that requires a 1000 loss let's say well, plasmas there's only one of but um let's say there's a really good psychic monster psychic onslaught is a esperoba skill you could draw your random psychic monster when you lose a thousand let's say let's say psi reflector becomes too good in what world that is, I don't know. But let's say it becomes too good, it gets added to this limit 3. So I think it's anything that... Any skill that requires losing a 1,000 could get put here. So... Sorcery Conduit was a ready hit to require 1,500. And now they put Cosmic Cyclone here as well. And Cosmic Cyclone getting nerfed is not a bad thing because everyone was just running it over other back row removals. So we could expect to see more night beams, more galaxy cyclones, more shins and who's things like that instead. Um, now element sabers can compensate for these inclusions to limit three. I think they still run three copies of palace of the elemental Lords because it's such a good card. You don't want to lose your key field spell for cosmic cyclone. And they are going to run Herald of the Abyss instead of Cosmic Cyclone to lose life points, to compensate for back row, more Lapoyas, more Night Beams, things like that. Um, that's all I could say. The field spell is too good to cut for Cosmic Cyclone. Alright, so three cards have been taken off the list. Wiz, Sage for Hire, Cyber Petite Angel, Vision Hero of Ion. Vision Hero of Ion is the interesting one to me because, um, well, it's not that interesting actually because the Masked Heroes aren't really a fusion deck. They can use the, um, I don't remember what the card's called. It hits for 5,000, but it can't attack directly. The Vision Hero something, I forget, but it Vision Hero of Ion is more for um, fusion plays. And Destiny Heroes got new tools recently, so it's interesting to see if Destiny Heroes make a comeback. Um, what was I going to say? Cyber Angels never really came back from those new cards, like Iz Izana and um, Machine Angel Ritual. I forgot what they're called. I'm forgetting cards with names now. The one where you draw two cards, but... They never really came back. For hires are interesting with this new Wiz. Um, you could get back to what they're doing. Wiz negates things. Uh, Dyna vanishes. So there's a lot going on with for hires. For hires might be interesting with this unlimit on Wiz. It's unlikely these these um, 
archetypes are going to go top tier, but they might be good enough for King of Games. And lower tier play as well. That is it for the nerfs. To talk about the nerfs and what was hit, you can you can see one deck that was a, that dodged everything. And that was Dark Magician. Dark Magician got into its magical hats and avoided Konami's nerf bet. Really, the only change that hit them was Sealed Tombs, but that hits a lot of other decks, so you can't really say that was targeted for Dark Magician, but that was the main skill they used. Doug Dimmit Duel is here. He has a Dark Magician deck. He noticed they got off free from Konami's hits. This is an expensive pay-to-win version, as he notes. This is a competitive deck, though. It's the build. You'll see what it's all about. It might cost you a little bit, but this is a deck to consider when all the nerfs come out. So here's Doug Dim and Duel's casual deck of the week or competitive deck of the week. Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. With all the nerfs and changes and just about everything under the sun that's been going on just in the course of one day, there's a lot to be excited about. So, I'm going to kind of bring everybody back to the harsh reality that Dark Magician decks are still going to be running rampant. There are no significant changes. So, with that being said, I uh, just wanted to show a different take on a Dark Magician deck that uh, I think I've actually seen show up quite a bit. Um, but still, let's let's kind of take a run through it. Uh, since Element Sabers got nailed and uh, Dark Lords got just destroyed, so uh, yeah, a lot to celebrate, but also a lot to be upset about. Since uh, there are still no touches to Dark Magician, uh, Magician's Rod is is still going to be the big um, you know the big thing that I, I was kind of wondering whether or not that was going to be semi limited or or anything along those lines. Nope, it's been left untouched. So still make sure to run your three copies of Magician's Rod. As you remember, you can summon this card and search out any card, that, uh, you know, any spell or trap card that specifically lists Dark Magician. So whether or not you're able to run your Dark Magician Circle or run your three copies of Magician Navigation, pull your copies of either of those as needed and end up getting into your ridiculous plays to start banishing your opponent's monsters, setting your field. And going from there, I run my three copies of Dark Magician. Uh, I don't use, um, you know, the other Dark Magician card that um, can special summon itself when you use a spell or trap during your opponent's turn. Uh, I'm not running that type of deck. I'm just running the normal Dark Magician cards because using Legion the Fiend Jester in one of the earliest mini boxes, uh, this is starting to uh, be a little bit more prevalent. I've been seeing it quite a few times in the um, the Vagabonds decks. You know, I, don't, I know it's great when you're going up against a Vagabond deck running a Dark Magician, but uh, yeah, what this guy does is, uh, you know, 1300 attack, 1500 defense. During your main phase, you contribute summon one spellcaster type monster in face-up attack position in addition to your normal summoner set. Uh, you can only get this effect once per turn. However, if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one spell caster type normal monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So I like the recyclability of this, especially if it's in late game and you've already kind of used up your Dark Magicians, they end up in the graveyard. Uh, you have an opportunity to, to get them back to your hand using Legion the Fiend Jester. But where Legion the Fiend Jester comes into play is running a Silent Magician package. Running your three copies of Silent Magician, uh, you know, it's it's that, uh, you know, that pay-to-win style deck there, and then your level 8 Silent Magician just running that one copy but um yeah it allows you to you know if you could get a turn one play having your silent magician on the field being able to potentially negate your opponent's dark magical circle in the mirror match is proving to be very very helpful and also being able to negate a cosmic cyclone which everybody and their brothers running i know they uh i don't even know what you call it now limit three they've uh three limited your um, cosmic cyclone not a huge impact right now so everybody should still be running three copies of their cosmic cyclones in their decks uh, so at least this allows you to, to counter and protect your dark magical circle. On top of that, you know, like I said, I run my, my Magician Navigation Package at 3, my Dark Magical Circle Package at 3. Uh, obviously, Illusion Magic uh, to be able to tribute either your uh, Magician's Rot or potentially your Legion the Fiend Jester to search out some Dark Magicians to get into your uh, magi Magician Navigation play. 
uh, just for good measure, run your copy of Treacherous Trap Hole. I just run one copy. And then to balance things out, I add one copy of the Eye of Timaeus. That way I could get into some of those extra deck plays. Most likely I'm going to run into Dark Cavalry because that seems to be just a very good counter to uh, just a lot of what's going on. Uh, Dark Paladin I throw in the extra deck too just in case I'm going up against the Blue Eyes deck. It's uh, something that they don't like to see. And then just also Amulet Dragon uh, just because I don't think I've ever used it out of the extra deck. But any, any Dark Magician specific fusion cards I throw into the extra deck but um, I'm actually running this with Sarah and the skill being used as Mind of Plana because with all the banishing that's going on and a lot of banish heavy decks uh, especially when you're going against the Shiranui uh, decks as well it's just great if during your turn you could just say, oh, yep, all your stuff that you banished that you thought you were going to use for something else, uh, including all those annoying Metaphys decks, uh, yeah, they're gone. They're out of the game completely. Uh, they just disappear and are sent to the Shadow Realm. It, it's fantastic. So uh, I, I know this isn't really a casual deck. This is a much more competitive deck, but I wanted to kind of run through it with you because, uh, you know, I think it's it's going to be very impactful moving forward considering, you know, even with the new main box coming out, uh, you know, I'm sure the meta is going to shift heavily, but Dark Magician is still going to be, uh, you know, kind of hanging around doing its thing. So try out this deck build. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, but anyway, that's that's it for uh, for Doug's casual deck of the week, or, or not so casual deck of the week. I will see you next time. Take care. All right, thanks, Doug. Check out him on this podcast every week. We have a new cool deck. Could be casual, could be competitive, could be farming. We don't know. And check out his Twitter page, Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk. On continued news, let's get to Blair Flanagan. Um, one thing that kind of miffed me is that they don't know how to spell Flanagan. In the game, there's... Between the N and the G, there's an A and there's an I. It's really with an I, but they spell it with an A. And Duel Links Meta is advertising for Raymore and Flanagan right now because of targeted ads. They want to sell me furniture thanks to Blair Flanagan's name. So that is all happening here. But this is the acquisition event. Our, we seem to get one legendary duelist to get every month. So she's the one this time. And really, it's a relief because we could use all the gems. So I'm trying to get through her and get all her cards and her gems. She has a bunch of cards that you level up with. Um, and those are the Twilight Sworns. In addition to some like Pikaru cards. But we'll talk about those at some other week. But it makes sense to talk more about the Twilight Sworns with the new box. Because the new box is Light Sworn support. So there probably is... There's a reason why they released Blair and then they released those cards in conjunction. So you're going to have to fly through her to get through her cards. They might be good cards, those Twilight Swords. But the event cards, there's two cards here. One is not that important. One is a Twilight Sword. So let's talk about her cards. Um, the cards that we got already, um, Maiden in Love. This is a, you got a prismatic one anyways from the, um, Getting her, Cupid's Kiss, Defense Maiden, Happy Marriage, uh, Janice Lightsworn. Well, Janice Lightsworn's a matter of the Lightsworn, but um, those Maiden and Loved Ones aren't really meta cards at all, but more cards for uh, that match her skills and things like that. But let's talk about the card Familiar Possessed Lina, level 4 light spellcaster, 1850 1500. You can special summon this card from your hand or deck by sending one face of line of the light charmer you control and one face of light monster you control to the graveyard. When summoned this way, you can add a spellcaster type monster with 1500 defense from your deck to your hand, except for a line of. If this card is special summoned by its own effect and attacks the defense monster, it inflict piercing. So the the charmers are all like flip, flip effect and take control of X attribute monster. Lina controls a light monster, so you could flip her over, steal your opponent's light monster, and then cheat out familiar possessed Lina from the deck by sacrificing those two monsters. Now you're doing it to get an 1850 monster, that's not much at all, 
but you do get to tutor a spellcaster with 1500 defense. So that is a lot of different monsters you can pick there. Um, and then this inflicts piercing. That's not too important because it's only 1850. But what this is, is this could be a package. You could just run the the charmers and then this card and then it's a package. But there's not enough light monsters in this meta right now. It could be when light scorns come out and the other support comes out of that box. There, this could be something you could consider. Right now, Cyber Dragons are the main light monster meta. So right now, this is something to take to get in case it becomes a package. It, it probably won't be knowing that flip effects have to work and you have to protect your charmer, things like that. But it's not bad to get this card. And I have zero of this card right now, so I really want to get some. The other card that's new is Lila, Twilight, Sworn, Enchantress, level 4, Dark Spellcaster, 1700, 200. Once per turn, you can target... No, when a spell or trap or effect is activated, you can quick effect, banish a light sworn from your hand or graveyard, target a face up spell or trap, destroy it. Once per turn, if your other light sworn monster's effect is activated, send the three top cards from your deck to the graveyard. So, light sworns are going to go off when that new box comes out. And Twilight Sworn is a subtype that makes, that gives them a chaos component. And that's very dangerous. There's a million Chaos cards in Duel Links. I just retweeted a Japanese deck that hit King of Games with some with the current Light Swarns and Twilight Swarns. So with the new box, there's going to be something something's going to go off. And this is a great control ability. It's almost continuous because as long as there's Light Swarns in the graveyard, this card's going to pop cards. And it's a great tech against field spells and continuous spells. Um, she, when her spell or trap is activated, you can quick effect, destroy a face up. So when your opponent plays a spell or trap, this is great against dark magic circle. You play as turn one, their, um, magician's rod can't hit over this. It's a hundred attack less. They can't play, uh, magician's rod. I mean, they can't play dark magic circle. So... As long as you populate stuff in the graveyard, this card will control the board. So I'm glad I got three of this card already. I have zero uh, Linus, but this is the better card, I think. Um, it's a Chaos card, sure. Like You're going to have to have a Chaos strategy with Light Swarns, but I think it's a very good play. Um, Thunder Dragons also have a possibility of using this, but less so. They do have their own Chaos thing going on, but this is more of a Light Sworn, Twilight Sworn thing actually really excited. I haven't looked at the cards for the new box in depth because of time. Um, but I, I might build towards it just because I have three of this card. Let's move on to the other PvE event, and that is Scheming Weevil. Scheming Weevil has two new cards this time. Not too exciting. First one is called Shiny Black Sea Squatter, level 4 Earth Insect 2000 Zero Vanilla. Um, this card probably shouldn't be meta at this point. It was, it probably would, it was meta in early in the beginning of the game. If it appeared then, 2000 with no downside, just zero defense. Sometimes you do see normal monsters be useful. Um, in the Synchro Toolbox deck, the Angel Trumpeteer is because it's a tuner, it's a plant. There's two things going for it. This is whenever you need a normal insect. I'm not saying it's going to happen anytime soon, but it's a decent card. It's a good card for new players. It looks cool. It's a UR. There's a lot going for this card. Funny flavor text. There's a lot more good than bad with this card, but just don't expect it to see play unless there's some insect thing going on. And Token Collector. This is level 4 Fiend. 2000 Defense. Zero Attack. If a token is special summoned except during the damage step, you can special summon this from the graveyard or hand. If You can only use this effect once per turn. If this is special summoned, destroy as many tokens on the field as possible. This card gains 400 attack for each token. Neither player can special summon tokens. So, uh, tokens are currently irrelevant in Duel Links. And speed duels... Hurt tokens. There's less monster slots and monster zones on the board. So instead of five, there's three. 
not enough space for tokens because typically a monster creates tokens. So there's going to be like one and two. So there's like two tokens. This could counter um, Nordic. There's that Nordic monster that you summon her and she creates two iron jar tokens, or I forget what they're called. But then you could cheat out this token collector. He can hit over her. That's all this is for. I can't really think of another token being used outside of this. The the insect queen, sure. Um, the um, what are those those planes called? Those those uh, jet fighters that are shaped like animals. I don't remember what they're called, but they make tokens too. Yeah, there's not much going on with token collector. It's only when some OP token comes along, and I don't think that's 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 ever gonna happen here. Next up is the DSOD level up increase. All DSOD characters are moving up to level 35. And that means 450 gems each. So that I count. I count five characters. So that is 2,250 gems. Which is nice. Uh, it probably was more back then, but they nerfed it. And two new cards for each character. Some are getting repeats. So with Kaiba, we're getting two copies of the Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Uh, stars in the Sky, level 12. Uh, fusion of three Blue Eyes monsters, 4,500 attack, 3,800 defense. At the end of the damage step, if this is the only face-up card you control, and this fusion summon card attacked, you can send one Blue Eyes fusion monster from your extra deck. This card can attack again in a row. You can use this effect up to twice per turn. During either player's turn, when a card or effect activated that targets a blue eyes monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard and negate the activation if you do destroy it. There's a chance this helps blue eyes decks. We are getting some blue eyes support from the new uh, box that's that just came out. This is it's 10:47, and it came out 47 minutes ago. So this new box is officially live. But this card helps. Um, this card is helped by Dragon's Mirror. Dragon's Mirror helps you fusion summon a lot easier. And this card is really solid one turn kill potential. Um, you might need to use your Dragon Spirit of White to clear the back row to help. Um, Dragon's Mirror is a little anti-synergy because it banishes all the blue eyes. It's kind of your last resort um, because they can't be reused. Your Silver's Cries are useless. Things like that. So there's some anti-synergy, but it's a nice um, way to close out games once you have cleared the back row and things like that. So Dragon's Mirror is something you can use to help summon this guy. And this card comes with a bunch of other late game abilities when it's destroyed, in the event it's destroyed. And it's also possible Cyberstein decks, which were not nerfed, can include this as an extra beater. So with Kaiba, we're getting two copies of that. Mokuba, we're getting two copies of an already existing card. This is Thunder Dragon's 100 Thunders. And if you're looking at... Uh, Thunder Dragons are a lower tier deck. They are a meta deck. So they're, they're a deck you can do pretty well with. And they don't have this card. They don't include this card anymore. Why? It's because this card limits special summoning of only Thunder Monsters. So if you look at um, Thunder, Thunder Dragon decks, they are synchro decks. They have a bunch of synchro plays. This is going to limit the Synchro deck to only like Mist Swarm or something. That doesn't really work out. So this prevents all their Synchro plays. If there's, a, if there's a pure Thunder Dragon deck running around, this card is useful as a, for consistency. There's three copies now. So get this card only if that happens. But I mean, you're going to get this card anyway when you level up Mokuba. But currently Thunder Dragon decks are Synchro decks. They cannot afford to use a card that prevents them from synchro summoning. Plain as simple. Joey is getting two cards. One is the second copy of Invader of the Throne. Flip effect, you could steal your opponent's monster and switch it up with this one. And this helps the consistency of this card being a generally useful warrior card. Uh, generally useful warrior cards are good for like red eyes slash decks and decks that need warriors. So not a bad card for that purpose. I think I was talking about that when Amazon as Swordswoman got nerfed. But, yeah. Second copy. 
And then there's a new card, Ventra, the Empowered Warrior, level 5, Wind Warrior, 2800. This card can attack your opponent directly. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one Dragon Warrior or Spellcaster normal monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. This is the strongest direct attacker I've seen, because typically they have to reduce their attack by half. There's that Super Heavy Samurai Ninja, and then there's Anki. They both have to reduce their attack by half. Um, Cyber Dark Edge. They all have to do that. This one can just hit for 2,000. And it has a monster. It has an ability to recoup a normal Dragon Warrior Spellcaster. It's a bunch of different monsters, so it can fit into like a Blue Eyes deck or... Not really Dark Magician, but like a Blue Eyes deck. The problem with this card, of course, is... You have to ramp this card the old-fashioned way. It's a level 5. So, I mean, there's plenty of ways to ramp now. You can use Gilosaurus, um, Double Summon. There's a lot of ramp cards nowadays. So, there might be some strategy with this card to get some kind of quick one-turn kill. Hit them pretty fast. But, again, we only have one copy of this card. It hurts its consistency of being a viable option for that. Move on to Sarah. She got um third copy of Guardian of Order. This is a card that's not good at all. It's, I mean, you, you, if you have two or more light monsters, you can special summon this. Sure, it's, it's extra. Um, this card never saw any play, even with its special summon ability. It's just a beater at 2,500. When you have a card like um, Chaos... Um, I don't even remember what's called. Chaos Hunter. Chaos Hunter is a 2,500 that just cheats itself out, but it prevents Spanish. This card can't do that. And then you can only control one of these at once, so it's not like you can even have like a ton of these. And then this card, this is a very interesting card. Amaterasu, level 10, level 9. A fairy spirit, 3000, 3000, cannot be normal or special summoned during either player's turn. When an opponent activates a card or effect that targets this face down monster, you can change this to face up, draw, face up defense, draw one card. If this card is flipped face up, banish all other cards on the field. Big. Once per turn, during the end phase, if this is flipped face up, return it to the hand. This is a board wipe. And very situation of board wipe. The only way you could play this is to sacrifice two monsters and set it. Or sacrifice like a light effigy or something. Targeted effects will flip this card face up and then you'll... Get a board wipe banish and draw a card. That's the best case scenario. Um, and then you flip this card to, uh, to attack yourself. If you flip this card face up to attack, or if you get hit by battle, um, you're not going to draw the card. I think that's how it works. But you still banish everything. And then it's a spirit, and she goes back to your hand. Um... With Sarah's Banish ability, this could be really good. You could just flip this and then Banish and then get rid of Minds of Plana, get rid of everything. This is a really good card. And, yeah, it's a really good card. You do have to ramp up two monsters onto the board to get this set. And it could be a dead giveaway, but there doesn't seem to be a way for your opponent to stop this card. Like Even if they try to use Brionic to send this back to the hand, it's going to get flipped face up. And then you banish everything. So there's a chance that this card will just get put into decks. I think if there's like a Mind of Plana deck, this is a pretty interesting card. Finally, Scud. Third copy of Tyrant's Temper. Third copy of cons- for Consistency. It's a poor man's Jinzo. I don't think it, run- I don't think it sees any play because you could just run Jinzo. And then... One copy of Thestalos, the Mega Monarch, level 8, Pyro, 2800, 1000. You can tribute summon this card by tributing one tributed summoned monster. If this card is tribute summoned, look at your opponent's hand, discard one card from the hand. Then if it's a monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its level times 200. If this was tribute summoned by tributing a fire monster, add this effect. Inflict Also inflict 1000 damage to your opponent after that. So this is a Mega Monarch, big burn ability. You might burn like 2,000 life points on your opponent. You have to do that whole double tribute summon, but there's a lot of Monarch support. It could... We're getting one copy of it because it's big time um, burn ability. It's not fun for anyone. Well, it's fun for you when you're burning your opponent's hand down, but 
Um, it's an interesting card. It's not a bad card um, at all. So in terms of priority, I've actually been leveling Scud up for the Monarch, but I think Sarah's card could be sneaky good. Joey's card's interesting too. Yeah. All right, so finally, uh, Card Flipper campaign. We're getting a third copy of the Enchanted Fitting Room. This is specifically for decks with low-level normal monsters. You could special summon them if you flip them up. Um, very interesting card. Um, again, there's there's been there's been a need to ramp up. Destiny Hero Plasma, for example, needs three monsters. This new Sarah monster requires two two cards to sacrifice to set. There's been a need for flooding stuff onto the board, and enchanting fit, Enchanted Fitting Room could fit that void of certain deck build that may want that. And it even it's even an Ojama card, sort of. So, a uh, third copy is not a bad idea to have in the game. All right, so that is. It for now. Uh, we also got upcoming news: early March Turbo Dual Grand Prix PvP event with new cards, Mighty Warrior and Synchro back. Early March Dual Quest. Mid March Raid Dual Wirakaka Raska. Second time this is back. Dark Salvo and Passion of Bai Masi. Mid March Tour Guides Mission Bingo with a new card called Howling Insect. Mid March Dueling Duelist Challenges. Late March, Carly Carmine's acquisition event, the Duel Links, her Duel Links Spotlight, new cards, Fortune Fairy N and Temperance of Prophecy. Late March, Professional Aster, new cards, D-Mind and D-Time. And finally, the Casey Cup's going to start the last day of March, March 31st to April 13th. So that is it for this episode. Like I said, next time I will discuss the new box. I will let better... Analysts look at the box and then I'll chip in and also talk about players, level of rewards, and dual skills. Check out this podcast and more. Search the dual assessment, you'll find this podcast. Leave any reviews for me, that would be much appreciated. And subscribe. Check out these notes at the dual assessment.wordpress.com. Email me anything, the dual assessment at gmail.com. And find me at Twitter, dual underscore assessment, or my own account at Green Ranger CCG. All right. All this new stuff is live. New box is live. Have fun, everyone. I'll see you next time.